pillar one two putting together full throws one of the things we're going to do is kind of work into our south african we're going to kind of get a little of that halfway point and one of the things we like to do is keep the foot here so that we teach the athlete how to feel kind of the foot come here it starts at six they wind it kind of turns and it turns over to here so that the hips follow this way simple thing that's it some people like to do it this way we do a combo now where you can start here wind and turn the foot so you learn how to create that rotate in that linear path so at either way one of the key things when we're doing a south african so we like to start here with our feet out so that the sweep legs already coming in this path and so what we do is we wind and we still get that foot to about 5 30 that allows this position and we can come around the south african is one of those useful drills in the sense that it teaches you how to kind of wind and then teaches you how to you know create that linear with the sprint leg and that rotational with the sweep leg and then again work on landing on top of the axis that's the key so you'll see some people who really kind of over rotate it and then come around and wind up in a pretty good position we'll get our discus and we'll again we'll think about our chain reaction we're going to put we'll start out with this position here again notice where the hips are the hips are facing about eight o'clock and so i'm going to wind this way and then i'm going to see that discus down here more at the low point because i'm going to rotate the foot here kick that sweep leg up to the high point and you're going to see how i'm going to come around and rotate now you notice when i do these drills and i'm walking through it i'm not eating up a ton of circle because that's not the point the, the motion and the speed is what's going to help you take up more ring and when we throw how quickly can we get back on the ground right we don't want to spend a lot of time doing you know this kind of thing because the time in the air is less efficient it's slower and we want to be able to get our feet back in contact with the ground as fast as possible and that's how you're going to be getting across the circle with more power and speed so here's your two options you can start here you so you get your sweep leg out we're in this position or we're going to be in this position and you're going to feel and that teaches you how to feel that knee load position so i like both it's all about what works best how we hold and drag the discus we don't want to be carrying the discus we want to drag the discus and the reason being is we want to be able to create that stretch against the discus when you get kids that carry the discus incorrectly it can really plague their technical development because they're tending to create a different kinetic or kinesthetic feel and what we're going to do in this video is we talk about we just are in preparation for an online virtual camp and a, a lesson where we're teaching how critical this is for throwers and so we're just going to take some of that video today and show you now one of the key things we talked about is avoiding cupping and that is a natural thing when you get used to holding the discus for the first time young throwers will tend to cup and so what you're going to do is you're going to want to avoid the cupping so you're going to want to do a series of simple exercises that are going to teach you how to do that and that's what we're going to dive into now I have this adorable young child that is going to be my demonstrator today, which is my daughter, and she has no real throwing experience. So we're going to be using her as an example of how to hold the discus, and we're going to go through a number of different drills. Then I have one of my athletes, high school athlete. He just started training with us this season, Ethan, and it's a good example of looking at a brand new beginning thrower and what we want to do to develop that thrower, and then what we want to do with a thrower that's trying to push 140, 50, 60, 70 feet, and how we want to make sure that we're really focusing on those details of how we're holding and carrying or we say dragging the discus because you don't want to carry the discus you want to drag the discus and so i'm going to have these guys try to do the same thing so you guys are going to take the discus we have it in our fingertips thumb kind of on the edge a lot of you guys don't have the thumb on there it, it's got to be closer to the edge so you kind of feel that and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the discus like this and we're going to point the discus down so we're like this so see how ella yeah perfect example so watch what we're going to do we're going to everybody's going to hold start with their discus like this but ella's holding it like this and it's not to be we're going to extend it out and then we're going to tilt it down but see you got to keep your arm straight and you got to keep the discus down don't i'm taller than you so your discus is going to be down there okay so you're going to do this way we're going to turn and see how she's wanting to cup and where's that discus going falling out so look at e so ethan's got more experience he's done a nice job adjusting he feels how that and now he's creating a little ledge for his discus now let's look at ella she's going to feel the same thing and she's got to get her thumb so look at me ella what you want to feel is you want to hold the discus like this but see what she's doing she's got her thumb down instead of her thumb open and then you angle the wrist so you're going to hold it like this and then you're going to turn but see when i'm turning you got to keep your thumb 
up on the edge, you gotta keep your fingertips on the edge of the discus. So you gotta get comfortable and hold it in your hand. So she's gonna go to the automatic cup. One of the things, again, we're just gonna be working on that position. And again, here's that simple exercise. Here, where you're bringing the discus up and you're getting comfortable and then you can just wind, the athlete can wind back and forth. And when they bring the discus, try to focus on keeping the discus off the wrist. So you're gonna notice that when I'm doing this and I'm winding, I'm keeping the discus off of my wrist. So go ahead and give that a try, E. And little E, go ahead and get, your, get a discus. So as he winds, he's gonna wind back and forth and he's keeping the discus off of his wrist. And he's gonna wind like that. He's gonna keep his disc, his arm long. And you're gonna notice Ethan tends to kind of do this when he brings it back. And we gotta get him used to being comfortable here. And how easy it is to learn how to carry the discus. But the problem is oftentimes people aren't getting comfortable. Now, depending on your hand size and all that kind of stuff, that can definitely have an influence, but it just means a little bit more practicing finding your comfort spots. And as we pointed out things in the video, the idea is to get comfortable with that discus so that it's something that you don't think about. So then you can actually work on technical development like your six pillars of the throwing chain reaction. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked today's video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button for us and we will see you on the next video.